So it's much more common to see sampling done from a large population and this is a more common style of question you'll see from your examiners also. And the way I think about this, it, it, it kind of means that you do a sample but you replace the thing that you take. Now how does that work? Well, let's go on and actually have a look or review binomial first of all and then talk about why or what this means. So for binomial experiments, there's n trials where n is determined in advance and is not a random variable. So remember that's just the number of times you do the experiment. Um, and there's two possible outcomes to each trial. Uh, and one of the things can happen is that you get a success or you can get a failure. And just a reminder that success doesn't necessarily mean a good outcome. If you're looking for, um, say, a patient with uh, heart disease, if that's what you're looking for, then if you find it, that's, a, that's deemed a success, even though it's not a good thing, um, it's successful. Um, the outcomes are independent from one trial to the next. So if you imagine me drawing a, t a tree diagram for heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, that's a half, 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 half. So each time the experiment is done, the uh, probability of the next thing has nothing to do with the previous and therefore the chance of success remains the same from one trial to the next. Okay, so the chance of getting a heads uh, the second time round after flipping a head the first time round is exactly the same. It's a half still. Alrighty, and then back to the formulas. So the expected value of um, a binomial experiment is the number of trials multiplied by the probability of success. And that sort of seems to make sense. So if I, if I flipped a coin 20 times, and the chance of success or the chance of getting ahead was 10, uh, that means I would expect to get 10 heads. Now re remember we don't actually get 10 heads, or we may get it, but we, we, we expect to get it, but the distribution we get will be binomial. Okay? It's, it's going to look like that. Alright, the standard deviation is by formula that, which is just the square root of the variance formula. Okay, and I think I alluded to the fact in binomial that that one there, I can't remember how that's derived, I just use that formula. So in the previous example, that is the small population, we calculated the probabilities for the sampling distribution based on knowing exactly what happened to the population when we selected a ball to be part of the sample. So because there was only, I think, 10 balls in total, we knew what happens when I take one is there's nine left and then eight left and then seven left. So that is if the ball, first ball selected to the sample is red, then the next one or the chance of getting a red the next time around was three out of nine, etc., etc. But when we actually really conduct a sample, the population is usually so large that we don't know the effect on the, uh, on the attribute we are wishing to make conclusions about. Okay? So when I take a sample from a large population, it has very little impact on the overall probability. Small, it does. Like, you know, if you'd look at the difference between four tenths and three ninths, that's a big difference, okay? But if the population size is, say, six million, and I take one from that, then, you know, what's, what's left over is whatever one removed from six million is. So. When it's so large, we just don't know the effect that's going to happen. And when it's so large, we assume that the probability of observing the attribute we are interested in remains constant. We actually say that it makes no difference. We take a sample, um, but we say that for each sample we take or each uh, thing we grab, it doesn't make an effect or have an effect on the overall uh, probability, irrespective of prior selections. And because we can make that assumption, what we get is the binomial distribution when we do this. So let's have a look at how it works. So suppose it's known that 60% of all students, uh, Victorian Catholic girls school students wear a ribbon. So the population um, uh, parameter uh, is, uh, the population proportion is 0 0.6. Okay, so we know this. We know that for the entire population, we know that P is 0 0.6. We just don't know what the population is. Suppose that we take a sample of size 4 from the population. Since selecting one student will not affect the value of P because it stays stagnant, it's exactly the same, 
then we can assume that this probability also remains constant for all selections of the sample. Okay? So again, what are we looking at? We're looking at whether a student wears a ribbon or no ribbon. We take one, okay, and we know that the probability of wearing a ribbon based on the population proportion is 0 0.6, or no ribbon is 0 0.4. And when we do the experiment again, when we grab another sample, we can either get a ribbon or no ribbon in the student. Ribbon or no ribbon. And again, we get a 0 0.6 or a 0 0.4. 0 0.6, 0 0.4. So have a look at that. The probabilities remain constant because it's a large population. That's different from what happened when there was only 10 balls that we were selecting from. Okay? So this is why we can conclude that what is going to happen is binomial. Since selecting one student will not affect the value of P, we can assume that the probability also remains constant for all selections of the sample. Um, we can calculate each possible value of P hat, the sample proportion, to create a sampling distribution using the probability function that, okay, i.e. work it out using the binomial distribution. So here it is, the probability of a, uh, a sample having no students wearing a ribbon uh, is that. Now how does that work? Well, I can do this one of two ways. I can work it out using the formula, which would be from four, none of them exhibit the characteristic we want. Chance of success, 0 0.6, and we get none of them, 0 0.4, and we get four of them. Now that's going to be, four choose zero is one, that's one, so it's going to be four over 10 to the power of four, which is two over five to the power of four, which is 16 over, oh, that, I can't do that one, uh, five to the four, 65, I think it's 65. Um, so let's just get the calc to do that for me. 2 over 5 to the power of 4. 625, I was right. Okay, and 16 over 625 does approximate to that. Let's just check that. There it is there. You can also use a uh, discrete binomial PDF uh, where the trial number we want is 0 of four trials and the chance of success is 0 0.6. Remember that will always default to a decimal. All right, and then we can get the one by doing that or using the formula for one. So I'll just change that to a one. We get that value, two, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how those values are required. Okay, the population that the sample of size n equals four is being taken from is such that uh, each item selected has a probability of 0 0.6 success. So we get this random variable. So p hat is a random variable, x over four, where x is the binomial random variable with parameters n equals four. So we're gonna say x uh, is binomial, where we've got four, and 0 0.6. So that's essentially what I've done to work out those probabilities. So the probability that the random variable p hat is these particular values is the same as the probability that this random, this binomial variable, uh, random variable x, is these x values here. They are actually the same thing. So we can write that statement, which is exactly the same as that. Now onto mean and standard deviation. So since the sample proportion p hat is a random variable with a distribution, we can get the mean and the standard deviation. So if we are selecting from a, a sample size of n from a large population, then we can assume that the sample proportion is in the form uh, p hat equals x over n, where x is a binomial random variable with parameters n and p. And therefore, we can use these. These are variations on the formulas for binomial. Okay. Now, what is different about them is that for binomial, the expected value, E x, is n p over, uh, is just n p. Now, because we've got um, uh, th this formula here, now let's just investigate why the expected value of p hat equals p. So what happens is the expected uh, value of the sample proportion, this suggests, is the same as the population proportion. And I think that makes sense because if I told you that the pop, uh, population proportion 
for something is 0.6 or 6 out of 10 um, in a population are right-handed, say for argument's sake. If I took a sample and I said, what do you think in the sample or what would you expect the sample to have in terms of uh, right-handers? Hopefully you'd say, well, wouldn't it be just 6 out of 10? That's what I'd expect to happen. We know, we know it doesn't always happen, but that's what we expect. Now, the standard deviation is also slightly different, okay? So you might uh, recognise this part here, that's from binomial, and then all we do is we divide that by n. Now, we call the standard deviation when we talk about um, uh, statistics as the standard error. So if you hear um, something talk about the standard error, they're talking about the standard deviation of the random variable here. Okay, so the formula sheet has the formula, so that's the standard deviation of the sample proportion and that's the expected value of the sample proportion. So um, yeah, they're both on the formula sheet, you don't need to memorise any of those. Okay, shall we try one? So here is one we can try out. In a certain country, the probability that a person is right-handed is 0.75, so they've given us the population proportion. The sample contains three people, so n equals three. Three people are chosen at random from that country. Countries have, well, typically lots of people, so we assume large. Therefore, what we're going to say is we're going to use a binomial approach for this. Okay, so construct a probability distribution table. So we're thinking about the sample and what we're saying is that the sample uh, can have zero right-handers. So that's what we're looking for. That's the trait, right-handers. One right-hander, two right-handers, or three right-handers. So they're the possible values. Now what we're going to look at is the sample proportion. So recall that p hat is just the values that, that the sample can, uh, can take on, which is x over n, the sample size, so x on 3. So each sh sample, 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 could be none out of 3 are right-handed, 1 out of 3, 2 out of 3, or all of them. And then what we can get is the probabilities for this. Now the probabilities are acquired using this binomial uh, approach because this thing here, x, is a binomial variable random variable, uh, we're doing this three times, chance of success 0 0.75. So we can get these values, which is the probability that this value here and the random variable x is equal to x, by simply using binomial to get them out. So let's do it. So I'll imagine this one here and this one here via the tree diagram. So right-handed, left-handed, three quarters, one quarter, and then doing it again, right-handed, left-hand, right-handed and left-handed, and these probs don't change. So this one here, none out of three, basically says I've got no right-handers in the sample or all left-handers, which is one quarter to the power of three or one over 64. Three is all right-handers, and that's three quarters to the power of three, which is 27 over 64. These ones here are a little bit harder to get out uh, and what we might do is use the calculator. I'll show you the calculation that we would use. So this one here is 1. So from 3, 1 is, uh, is right-handed where the chance of getting a right-hander is 0 0.75 to the 1 and the chance of being left-handed is 3 take away 1 is 2. So you pop that into your calculator going to advance NCR, 3 choose 1, which is 3, 0 0.75 times 0 0.25 to the 2. Let's ask for that as a fraction. Yep. So that's 9 on 64 for 1. And we'll just change this to a 2. That would be power 2 this time. And 3 take away 2 is 1. 27 on 64. And you can quickly see 27 and 27 is 54, plus another 10 is 64. So um, our distribution probabilities add to one, which is a very good sign. Okay, so find the probability 
that the random variable is larger than 0 0.5 given that the random variable is less than 0 0.8. Okay, so let's just go ahead and reinterpret this. Find the probability that the sample proportion is larger than 0 0.5 given that we know it's less than 0 0.8. So again, here's 0, here's 0 0.3 recurring, here's 0 0.6 recurring, and here's 1. So we know that it's larger than 0 0.5, or we want it when it's larger than 0 0.5, but we know it's less than 0 0.8. So what is it? If it's less than 0 0.8, it's going to be all of these things here, which is uh, 36, 37. So 37 over 64. And what's the chance of it being larger than 0 0.5? So we know that it's larger than 0 0.5, so it's not both of these things, it's just one of them, it's this one here. 27 over 64. So we don't include this one here because we know that it's less than these values. All right, so that's going to be 27 over 64 times 64 over 37. They cancel out and we've got 27 over 37. Okay, so the mean and the standard deviations. So we know that for a random variable, uh, which is the sample proportion, it's just equal to the population proportion. The population proportion here is 0 0.75. And if you actually worked it out by doing that by that, plus that by that, plus that by that, plus that by that, you'll get exactly the same value. So this one here, the expected sample proportion is 0 0.75. It's the population proportion. All right, the standard deviation of the sample proportion is the square root of P times 1 take P all over n. That square root symbol should cover both of them, so make sure you fix that. Okay, so that's going to be 3 on 4 times 1 on 4 over 3 all square rooted. So that's going to be 3 on 16 divide 3, which is times by 1 third, which is still being square rooted. 3's cancel off, square root of 1 16th is a quarter. So the standard deviation is a quarter. You could also do this via stats on the calculator, so I'll show you that. Again, I'm just trying to flit around a little bit and show you a few different things. So let's put the possible sample proportions. So 0 out of 3, 1 out of 3, 2 out of 3. Oops, 2 out of 3 and 3 out of 3 or 1. And the probability of getting those sample proportions, 1 out of 64, 9 out of 64, 27 out of 64, and also 27 out of 64. Right, now what I'm going to do is ask the calc to get the one variable stats, where list 1 is the uh, possible sample proportions and list two is the probability of getting those. Okay, so the mean is 0 0.75 and uh, sigma or the standard deviation is 0 0.25 as we just found out. In this next example, we're supposing that 80% of the community are against changes to the current gun laws. So what we've got is the population proportion um, at 80%. Uh, if a random sample of 120 people are chosen, so that's our n value, find the probability that the sample proportion is equal to the population proportion. Okay, so this is basically, if we took a sample of the community, we want to know what's the chance of the sample proportion being the same as the population proportion, i.e. 80%. So there's a couple of ways of doing this one, um, but basically what we could do is say, what is 80% of 120? And that is going to be 96. So what we're interested in then is the sample proportion being 96 out of 120. And then what we'll get is the same as the population proportion. So the sample will have 80% and the population has 80%. So remember that that's what p hat is going to be and p hat is x on n. Now this x value here 
is a binomial distribution. Um, so it's binomial and how many people have been chosen? 120, chance of success 0 0.8. So what we'll do is just use the binomial formula, formula which is 120 choose 96, success, fail, uh, which is going to be 24, and that will be our probability. So we'll just use CDF or PDF for this. So discrete binomial PDF. Uh, so the one we're after is 96 of 120. Chance of success is 0 0.8. And there it is. So they don't give a suggested rounding. It usually in the VCAR exam is four decimal places. Okay, find the probability that the sample proportion lies within one standard deviation of the population proportion. So straight off the formula sheet, the standard deviation of the sample proportion is equal to P times one take P all over N. All right, so in this case, let's just work it out. Um, so it's 0 0.8 times 0 0.2 over 120, and we get the square root of that. So shift root, shift divide. And we get standard deviation of root 30 over 150. All right, so the sample or the population proportion is 0 0.8. So what we'll do is we'll plus the standard deviation and minus the standard deviation of the population proportion uh, from there. So we'll do a 0 0.8 subtract it and 0 0.8 plus it, and that will get us the interval over which we'll get binomial CDF to add up for us. So the way we'll do this is we'll go 0 0.8 plus this value and it'll be like 85, 83, so that's 83%. And then we'll times that by the sample size. So this is between 100.38 dot 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 and the lower side will be 91.618 dot 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 so it's between this value here and this value here now we know that we can't do um, decimals with binomial so what we need to do is it lies within one standard deviation so we're going to creep this one up to 92 and bring this one back to 100 so we want the probability of the random variable being 92 or the sample size being not the sample size rather the observation in the sample to be 92, 93, 94, 95, all the way up to 100. So for that, we'll use binomial CDF. Lower is 92, upper is 100. We're doing it 120 times. Chance of success is 0 0.8. So it's a fairly high probability that it's gonna lie within one standard deviation. In fact, it's almost 68%. So just note that um, because this one standard deviation we know with a normal distribution is 0 0.68 or roughly 0 0.68 and the binomial approximates to the normal quite well. So we're gonna say that uh, this one here, so the probability is 0 0.69 Five, nine, which is six zero oh, to four decimal places. Okay. A pollster believes that 75% of the voters in a particular election favour candidate A. Let P hat be the random variable that represents the sample proportion of voters favouring candidate A in a random sample of size N drawn from this population <coughs> Excuse me, of voters. Find the smallest integer value of n such that the standard deviation of the of p hat 
is equal is less than or equal to 1 on 64. So let's just write out the formula for standard deviation of the sample proportion, which is the square root of p times 1 take p all over n. Now we know that it has to be less than or equal to 1 on 64, uh, 0.75. over n is less than or equal to 1 on 64. So what we'll do is square root both sides. And this will be 3 quarters times a quarter over n. Now that's going to be 3 on 16 when we divide by n, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, so the n is going to go there, less than or equal to, and will I work out that? No, I won't at the moment. Okay, so what I'm going to do is 3 times, it's being squared still, less than or equal to 16n, so I've cross multiplied there. Um, now I'm going to go n greater than or equal to 3 times 64 squared over 16. Now what we'll do is we'll just simplify this up a little bit. So n greater than or equal to 3 times. Now 64 can be written as base 2. So 2 to the 4 is 16. 2 to the 5 is 32. 2 to the 6 is 64. So that's 2 to the 6 to the 2 over 16, which is 2 to the 4, 3 times 2 to the 12 over 2 to the 4, n greater than or equal to 3 times 2 to the 8. Now 2 to the 8, so 2 to the 6 was 64, 2 to the 7 was 128, 256. So that's n greater than or equal to 3 times 256 n greater than or equal to 768 so when the sample uh, hits more than 768, you're going to get a standard deviation that's less than or equal to 1 on 64. Okay, so the final question for this exercise. Inside a container there are 1 million coloured building blocks. That's large. It's known that 20% of the blocks are red. So that's our population proportion. A sample of 16 blocks is taken from the counter. Four samples of 16 blocks p hat is the random variable of the distribution of the sample proportions of red blocks. Now you don't know how to do this anyway, but we're not going to use the normal approximation. So we want to find out the chance that the sample is um, more than 3 out of 16. So what we're accepting is 3 in the sample, so 3 red blocks, 4 red blocks, 5 red blocks, 6 red blocks, etc, etc, all the way up to 16 red blocks. So what we'll do is we'll use, so this, this value here is a binomial, uh, binomial distribution. Uh, we're doing it 16 times or 16 selections and the chance of getting a red is 0 0.2. So what we want to work out is the probability that the random variable is larger than or equal to 3. Alrighty. So we'll just go straight to CDF. Three upper is 16. We're doing it 16 times. Chance of success is 0 0.2. Yep, there it is, the A response. All right, so there it is. After all of that work, um, there's only six questions. Good luck.